Hello again. Um, today I was going to talk to you about reverb. It's uh, something a lot of people ask. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. There are some absolutely wonderful tools uh, available to composers now which will produce pretty much any type of effect or room setting you want. Um, they fall into two basic types. There's convolution reverbs, which are basically samples of real acoustic spaces, uh, which can be anything from a massive concert hall to the inside of a Ford Fiesta. Um, and there's algorithmic. Um, the convolution ones tend to take a lot more of your processing power. Um, algorithmic are um, mathematical models of reverbs rather than samples, take a lot less um, CPU, but produce a slightly different effect. I use both. Um, let me just turn to my uh, cup of tea. Um, sorry, turn to my sequence. Um, let's, for example, in my uh, Epic template, um, I have a lot of different libraries. Um, here we've got, for example, the VSL flute. Now, VSL are famous for being very dry. Um, their instruments tend to be recorded um, without all the ambience that we're used to with one or two other libraries. So if I can just find the, uh, the flute, where's the flute? There's the flute. OK, so turn the reverb off completely. Now, there is a a staccato flute, absolutely dry. There'll be other libraries in uh, my template which are extremely ambient. A lot of the Spitfire stuff, for example, has you know the wonderful lush sound of the Air Lindhurst Hall, and so that's part of the sample. With more and more libraries, you have control over mic positions and things, which allow you to some degree to um, modify how close or how ambient um, the sample may sound. But a lot of libraries like this one um, are just going to sound quite dry. The first stage when I use reverb is to try and place all these different libraries more or less in the same acoustic space. And so I use a convolution reverb, I use spaces, and I have... Uh, so here is one of my PC slaves, and you can see I have... This has got brass and woodwind on it. I have quite a lot of... The, there's Hollywood brass, there's Albion brass, there's Symphonia brass, uh, cine brass, you know, all this stuff, and there's quite a lot of different outputs. Each one of these outputs has associated with it um, a separate reverb. So at the other end of this mixer, you see loads and loads and loads of reverbs. Each one of these is a different instance of spaces. Because they're very CPU intensive, it's a very good idea to run them on your slaves if you're going to go down this slightly bonkers path. So if we find first of all where the flute is there we are now therefore this coming out of output one and two we go to reverb one and two which is an instance of spaces here I've got the Burbank scoring hall so it's a nice you know reasonably large acoustic space I'm not rooting anything to it at the moment as soon as I do you'll hear the difference so here we go we add now, it's not a long reverb tail, it just sounds like it's in the room. OK, it's a really nice sound. I like that sound. The rule with reverb is to put less rather than more because you can always add more, but you can't take it off once it's on. So that's stage one. So if we say this is stage one... Then, it, on my Mac, I add some finishing reverb. And for this, I use the algorithmic reverb. Um, I'm using the Lexicon uh, PCM native stuff. And here it is. There. Um, so it doesn't put much strain on the processor. And actually, it seem, I'm not sure if you can see it. I have an old Lexicon uh, 300 down here, which is a hardware reverb, which cost me an absolute arm and a leg when I bought it. Um, and was the best sounding reverb known to mankind. Now, this um, plugin, which costs a fraction, of course, of uh, what the uh, original cost, is very efficient. So you put, here we go, let's root uh, reverb send B. 
If you're working in stems, it's very important you have one reverb for each stem, otherwise all the sound gets mixed up. So here, we're now rooting... You see this, with, with this reverb, I'll turn it up a bit so you can hear the, really clearly the effect, but yeah, move it over there. It's a oh, wrong one, stupid me. What am I doing? Here we go. That's it. So let's turn it up so you can hear the full effect. This is more of effect, an effect than a... Now, the really nice thing with, uh, convolution, uh, with algorithmic reverb also is you can have very long reverbs, which are very... It's a great effect. It is more of an effect than uh, a... And, and that very wet sound, I think, is not particularly trendy now. I mean, it sounds a little bit old-fashioned to soak things in reverb like that. Um, but often, you want to add that at the final um, stage to you know, get the whole thing to sound great. But, you know, that Michael Giacchino sound is very much just the sound of the room and so you might just work with convolution reverbs and not add any of this finalizing reverb particularly with brass and particularly with fast action stuff which you want it to be short because the more reverb you add the more fuzzy the whole thing becomes uh, some people will go to you know the nth degree with this and will put um uh, use systems like mir from vsl which literally place a dry sample at a particular spot in a room. So it's a simulation of not just what the room is, but what it would sound like if that player were there. I don't think that any amount of reverb added to a, to a close mic sample will make it sound like you know, uh, a sample recorded with um, a deck of tree and outriggers and all the rest of it. Um, so this is only ever a step in the direction of making them sound like they're all in the same room. But um, although this is on a fairly grand scale because of the um, ludicrous and uh, the scale of my template and the the confession I've already made about total lack of self-control when it comes to samples. Um, the basic process here of placing the instruments in the room and then using a finding, finishing reverb is not an uncommon one. I've come across quite a lot of other people who do that. So I pass it on to you for what it's worth. Um, as I say, I'm using spaces and I'm using um, uh, the lexicon algorithm, but there's loads of other convolution reverbs, space designer, um, Altiverb, they're all absolutely excellent. Um, no one is any greater than any other. You need to use your ears and decide which one works for you. Hope that is useful. See you again.